On May 28th of 2024, Dragonfish 24.04.1 was released, which is just a point release update. Then on May 29th, there was another point release update to fix a minor problem if you had set up a bridge interface and that was fixed. I'm glad they fixed it really quickly. So for those of you wondering, should you update? It is currently June 3rd of 2024 and I've had no problems since those updates with my applications working, the virtualization working, and well, the system working properly. I always wait a couple days before I do a video. But the bigger information is going to be about Electric Eel. They have really reached out to the community. They've listened to them. They're making some big changes. So let's talk about the Dragonfish point release update and then the bigger news coming from Electric Eel. Let's start by taking a quick look at the change log. Here's the 24 .04.11 change log, which fixed that app service not starting. So if you weren't using the apps, you didn't even notice this problem, but you know, go ahead and update to the latest. You don't need to do things incrementally, but there are a few nice changes. We get the latest kernel, new version of Samba, updated R clone, fixed to address issue involving ZFS art cache and excessive swap usage leading to performance degradation. There are certain parameters that may lead to this problem. So that's been fixed. Uh, automated migration to force home directories to existing SMB users to non-existent and var empty. There's a lot of little fixes, of course, because this is just a point release. Now, for those of you using the Intel Arc GPU firmware, they've enabled transcoding. This is big if you're using that. This is not something I really use right now. I don't really need to transcode the videos that I have, at least using any of the apps such as Plex, but maybe in the future I'll take a look at this. Uh, but they've been doing a lot of engineering work to make that functional and, of course, adding support for not just NVIDIA, but things like Intel Arc. Now, there's a few more things listed down here, but one of them's worth noting is the fixing apps with a bridge interface. This is something I guess you couldn't really do before, and it's not something I've done much testing with. And maybe I'll do a video in the future about building bridge interfaces in TrueNAS scale. The products become a lot more mature, and there is some demand for that. This was something I did cover on how to do this in TrueNAS Core, and the process is pretty similar, but there's a few differences being that it's on scale. Now, let's move on to the really big news coming from Electric Eel. Now, we're a little ways from release of Electric Eel, should come out later this year, but anticipated features in the top of the list here is going to be expand a read Z pool with individual disks. Now, this code's been committed and being tested. They're just slow to put it in TrueNAS, and I'm completely fine with that because we want to be able to really trust that our storage servers are reliable and that there's no bugs in a feature like this. The other thing that's going to be in here, and there's a lot of good stuff that I'm like, okay, this is nice or that's nice, but let's move right on to them listening to the feedback that all of us have been giving and moving on from the K3s into the future of Electric Eel and apps. There's been some great progress on apps and scale. The Kubernetes K3s has been integrated. A catalog system has been built to enable web UI management for apps. ZFS with modified support Docker overlay FS to better handle snapshots from containerized applications. However, one thing's been missing to now, Docker Compose scripts. They cannot be used for importing applications. But the plan is, and this is the whole detailed write up here, that they're going to have this. So, besides the exciting news of the OpenZFS 2.3 with RAID Z expansion and Fast Dedupe, by the way, there's a whole blog post I'll link to down below about the new Fast Dedupe feature that's coming. So, Dedupe got a rewrite that's a sponsored commit from both Claris Systems and IX Systems updating the code in ZFS for some good improvements. And I'm excited. But the whole Docker and Docker Compose, there's a good discussion here. Uh, you can read through all this. This will be link down in the description below because this is exciting news. Now, I've been critical in the past about the complexity of K3s and the catalog that they have, which they've done a good job of expanding and maintaining, but there's always been a little bit of bugs and nuance in there, which has kind of led me not to talk as much about the apps because they just don't have that stability I like. Moving to Docker, I think, is huge. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and also the RAID Z expansion. Leave those comments down below. Now, I've been running several days on the new version. I haven't run any issues at all. ZFS replication seems to be working and all the other things like my V VMs and apps that I have that I've updated on there all seem to be working well. I even left one server not updated to make sure ZFS replication from my servers that are updated works to that one. And that's run for the last few days without any errors at all. But hey, always look hearing from you. I will leave the links down below, especially to that forum post uh, in the TrueNAS forum. So you can go ahead and comment on it because they're really taking some community feedback on there. I'm excited to see Docker. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. They have more in discussion about this and other videos, head over to the TrueNAS forums because that's a great place to, to post your TrueNAS questions or just engage with the community. The developers are very active there and I will see you next time. Thanks.